Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Bella. I love all things design and DIY and today I'm gonna be showing you around my bedroom. I've been posting interior design content here on YouTube for quite a while now and I can't believe I have yet to show you my bedroom. The room where I spend most of my free time, where all of my absolute favorite pieces go and where I just feel the most peace and myself ever when it comes to the style in here. I have a few videos back on my channel that I'll link down below that give you a little glimpse into kind of how the style in this room has progressed. I think one of them is a Christmas decorating video I did in here. So, you know, if you're looking for some early inspiration, I'll link that down below, but I've never actually fully detailed all of the things in this room. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get started because I have a lot to say. I think we'll start with the most obvious and I think most important element in this room, my bed. Bedding is so important. Again, I will link a video down below that I go over all of my bedding, how I make my bed, the whole process and thoughts behind that because of course there has to be a process to everything for me. But starting with the actual bed itself, I just have the simplest IKEA bed frame. I don't know that they make this one anymore, but it's just like whatever the cheapest option that you could get at the time. It's just pine, very plain, very simple with a really low headboard. So I got that as the base to start building up the rest of my bed with. So I have mattress, memory foam, feather bed. I love a soft bed and this is absolutely my nest, my cocoon. So I need everything to be perfectly plush and soft at all times. My headboard is something that we've just had for a very long time. This has been in my bedroom since I was a teenager and it's been painted many, many, many times. I honestly don't know where it came from. I think my mom might have found it on the side of the road. You're gonna notice a theme in this video that almost everything has either been passed down through my family, thrifted, pulled off the side of the road, or from Marketplace. So the links to find things that I own will be very sparse, but I absolutely love the dark color of this headboard mixed with lighter, more colorful bedding. I'm really into in this room, you'll notice like dark contrasting with light. I love bringing in like moody earth tones in this room and then bringing that contrast against the really stark like white or warm cream tones and then adding in accents of kind of more jewel tone colors, I think is just like the perfect mix. I kind of like to rotate my bedding, but this is a combination that I've been absolutely loving lately. A lot of this is the same as the things I had on my bed in the bedding video, which will be linked down below. So if you wanna know where things are from, you can watch that. I won't waste our time talking about that, but my rules for bedding are everything must be cotton, or some sort of natural fiber. I do not like polyester on my skin, so polyester sheets and pillowcases are out of the question. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. The pillow count on my bed right now stands at 10, and I think that's the most pillows I've ever had on this bed, and I honestly can't stop. I love pillows. They're one of the most important things in my life, and so if you wanna know if you have too many pillows, you don't, you just don't. If you're asking me, keep buying more pillows. <laughs> My bedside table is a Facebook Marketplace find. It was like maybe 20 bucks and I absolutely love it. I didn't show it here, but I painted the inside of it in this really beautiful, color that's one of my favorite paint colors, Kensington Green by Benjamin Moore. I love that little detail of color. I also made sure to paint the sides of the drawers so anytime the drawer opens, I can see that little flash of robin's egg blue and it just makes me happy. The sconces on either side of my bed are from Ikea. They're very simple. I'll try to link them down below if they still carry them or if they're not exact, something similar, but I really love the contrast of these being really, really streamlined looking and a little bit contemporary mixed with all of the more like old world elements I have in here. 
I don't play with that contrast too often, especially not in this room, but I do like to have little hints of it here and there. I think I wanna move on to the console table that I have in my room. This was something that showed a lot of maturity, me being able to buy a console table. I feel like that's quite a mature thing to have a console table because really console tables don't serve any purpose. I did make sure before welcoming this piece into my bedroom about a year ago that I was at a place emotionally where I could stop myself from piling too much crap on this table constantly. I had reached a point being a very messy person. I am creative, I'm all over the place. I have a lot of stuff, it ends up everywhere. So one of the ways that I had worked on eliminating that in my bedroom specifically was slowly taking away every flat surface from myself. If I couldn't keep the flat surfaces clean, they were revoked from me. I no longer deserve the privilege of having a flat surface. So there really wasn't anywhere to put things. To try to train myself to stop just putting things down and actually put them away instead. So the console table was a treat for me and I try my very best to keep it nice and clean almost all the time. <laughs> Since the weather is getting a little bit cooler, fall is approaching, I'm always in the mood at this time of year to start leaning a lot more into my like maximalist style. I want to layer more things. In the summer, I like everything to be kind of streamlined and clean and kind of stark, honestly. And so I am so excited right now that I'm able to start layering more pieces. So I have this beautiful demijohn full of fall leaves that my mom cut down for me a few days ago. She just came home with a big armful of fall foliage, which is the most perfect sight to see. So I place them in this demijohn and I absolutely love how it reflects that turquoise color that I have in my bedding. I have books stacked here with the most beautiful combination that I am recently obsessed with of putting candles in ashtrays. These two ashtrays I absolutely love and the candles that are in them just happen to fit them perfectly. Something that I love doing is just layering things in an unnecessary way that just push them over the top for no reason. I think that that pretty much sums up my style. The two candles that I have in here, which I'm absolutely obsessed with, they're two of my favorites. One is Juniper Berry Sage by Sand and Fog. It's like a sweeter but sort of fresh kind of smell at the same time. It's very nice for fall and Christmas if you don't want something like overpowering or too like earthy and heavy smelling. It's like a nice fresh uplifting smell for those times and it's not really like too on the nose of those seasons so I'd say you can kind of burn it all year round. And then the next one is also one of my favorites. It's Fire Glow by Woolsey's. This scent, oh my God, is it ever perfect. If you like scents that are like earthy, almost like musty smelling, but in a good way, you will love this smell. It's sandalwood and maybe vetiver or something like that. It's just very woody and earthy. I don't know how to describe it but it's perfect. I also have this lamp that I thrifted recently. I showed a little DIY that I did with that in a vlog a few videos ago of me adding some fall decor to my room. So if you wanna know how I kind of antiqued the like faux brass on this lamp, you can go and watch that. I love this pop of yellow in the shade. It perfectly matches the candles, which was not intentional, but like, I think I'm just gravitating towards those like golden tones right now. I especially love how they look against the turquoise tones in this room. I just ugh, could not be more perfect to me. On the lower portion of the console, I just have a stack of books that I haven't got to reading yet. So I think that's where I'm gonna try to stack those for the time being and see if it doesn't get too out of control. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you about my beautiful lady I have sitting here. I don't know what statue this is, but I think it's a famous one. My mom got this for me for Christmas. It was a Marketplace find. Anyone who knows me could just go on the antique section of Marketplace and find the weirdest things and give those to me for Christmas, and I would be so happy. And that's exactly what my mom does. So I love her 
my mom, but I'm talking about the statue. <laughs> she doesn't give me creepy vibes. She gives me really just like peaceful, I'm just here kind of vibes. And then behind her, I have a really pretty antique rose print that my mom gave me. I'm not sure where we got this, but I think it's really gorgeous having that little pop of pink in here. And then I also have a pressed butterfly that I bought in Newport, Rhode Island at a shop that I will link down below. If you're in that area, it's called like cottage and garden or something like that, but the link will be below. This place is so magical. It's just like an antique slash gift shop sort of thing. And their taste is just so me. It's impeccable. And that's where I got this butterfly. And every time I look at it, it just makes me think of Newport and makes me happy. On the opposite side of the console table, I have a painting of my great grandmother's. This is of a really beautiful fall scene over a river. It just happens to be that I love this fall mood all the time, but when fall actually rolls around, it couldn't be more perfect. Another thing that I love about this is that it actually isn't framed properly. Somewhere along the line, I guess this used to have a gold frame on it and that popped off. So it's just in the inner section of the frame. I don't know what you call it, but I actually love that about it. I think it makes it look a lot more just like simple and paired back and kind of match the vibe that's in the actual painting. So I love this. I love looking at it. It's just so pretty. Moving on to the little seating area I have for any time a visitor comes and talks to me while I'm laying in bed. If that sounded really creepy, I don't mean like ghosts. I mean like my mom or something. This chair was $7 one of my favorite thrift finds ever. It's covered right now by a blanket and pillows, but it has a really pretty cane back that you can kind of see. I love the pop of bright chartreuse of this chenille blanket. This was another really amazing thrift find that my mom found, and I think it was $5. It is a single chenille bedspread, and those are something that anytime I see chenille at the thrift store, I am snatching that up so fast and to find them in fun colors is kind of rare. So this was a really, really good find. I also love the dusty blue tone of these velvet pillows mixed with the mustard. I think that is such a nice color combination. And then to the side of this chair, I have a cheese box that for some reason we have two of and I've adopted one of them into my bedroom. I don't know where my mom got these like years ago. I wanna say probably an auction, but it's just a really fun piece of furniture to have because while it is currently acting as a side table, it used to house wheels of cheese, which is so fun. And on top of that, I have a salt lamp that I've layered on top of a like plant pot plate. I don't know a better way to say that, but I've put this here because my salt lamp started sweating. So I put it on this plate, problem solved, and it's just another layer, which I love. Next, I wanna talk about the kind of piece de resistance of the room. If my bed wasn't enough, then this is probably my favorite thing ever. This is really special because it's kind of a wall of both of my grandmothers. The bottom dresser came from my dad's mom and the trunk came from my mom's mom. And they are both so perfectly them if they could be pieces of furniture, you know? You'll notice on the dresser that the top right drawer is a different color than the rest of them. This is because my grandmother started refinishing the dresser and I guess after she got done one drawer, she decided this is too much work and she gave up, which is just so me. So every time I look at that, I get a good laugh. And then on top of that is this really, really beautiful trunk that my mom's mom very sweetly gifted to me. And this is actually the trunk that she moved all of her belongings in when she came from Manitoba to Ontario, which is just such a little fun piece of family history. I obviously didn't take all the stuff off of the top of this to show you in the video, but the inside is also lined with this really pretty blue clover print. This might've come from Ireland originally. 
but I'm unsure. And then on top, this is my first kind of relationship I've had with silk flowers. I've always been a hater, not gonna lie. I am a florist, my family owns a floral business, and so I've always been lucky enough to have access to fresh flowers all year round. So that may have something to do with my prejudice against silk flowers, but it's also always just seemed a little bit wrong to me. But something about this red faux dahlia or whatever it's trying to be just got me at Michael's. I was gonna make a wreath with these, but then once I brought them home and had them sitting just randomly thrown on a table in my bedroom, I was obsessed with the way that this like really punchy red color with a hint of orange in it looked in this room. And so then I thought that's the perfect spot for them up on top of the trunk. It brings a little bit of color to that area, which has always been a little bit difficult to do. So we will see how I get on with these silk flowers. I don't know how long it's gonna take until I get sick of them. But for the time being, I'm loving them, especially for fall. Beside the flowers is a recent addiction. What, addiction? I just said that word. I did not mean to say addiction. A addition. I have decided to start collecting vintage Nancy True books. If you've been watching my videos recently, you're probably like, hey, can you stop talking about the vintage Nancy Drew books, please? But just to get you all up to speed. So I have three so far, and I thought they would just look so cute for fall, stacked beside this vintage typewriter that I have. Another amazing marketplace gift that my mom gave me a few years ago for Christmas or my birthday. Just the best gift giver. Wow. And kind of blanketing the entire space is this red and orange rug, which is from Structube. So I will link that down below if I can still find it. I think that is everything that I wanted to detail in my bedroom. I hope you enjoyed this and it gave you some inspiration for a space of your own. I love this time of year for decorating and I just start getting so excited about how my space is gonna evolve on the road to Christmas. So I will absolutely be documenting all of that because it's just gonna get wackier from here on out. This room is probably just gonna get more layered and more chaotic and magical and I'm so excited. Give this video a like down below if you enjoyed it to let me know that you wanna see more content like this and subscribe so that you know when I do post more videos like this and I will see you back here next time.